In the history of horror movies, there have been so many classic and niche monsters that have kept audiences awake at night in fear. The following are the best examples of these terrifying creatures who really shouldn't get you feeling nervous, but do. Whether it's down to a lack of effective killing skills or just a logical misstep that actually shouldn't make them a threat, these monsters shouldn't get audiences riled up at all, yet they have and will continue to do so. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 horror movie monsters that shouldn't have worked, but did. Number 10. Cujo in Cujo Only the wicked and sinister mind of Stephen King could think about taking a creature so lovable as a dog and turning them into a horror story's hideous villain. The original story of Cujo occurs after the friendly and sweet pup contracts rabies and proceeds to inflict a reign of terror over the small town he resides in. It almost feels like Old Yeller's Revenge, and the movie adaptation did a great job of displaying the fear that this monster could bring. While the idea of being attacked by a dog is not pleasant, it's hardly horror movie material. After all, dogs are man's best friend, and almost everyone loves them, so they shouldn't be scary, right? Wrong. Cujo is a horrifying creature and will have even the stoutest of dog people petrified. More than just being a dog, the breed chosen happens to be that of a Saint Bernard. This is a breed that's widely known for its gentility and friendliness, and often feels more akin to a giant teddy bear than a canine, which should make him even less scary, but it doesn't. As always, King is a master at turning mundanity into terror, as this creature, that even under awful circumstances shouldn't be too intimidating, is transformed into a nightmarish beast. Number 9. The Fly in The Fly by all rights, this film has no purpose, being as scary as it is. When describing the plot on paper, it sounds less like a horror movie and more of a goofy comedy. Still, this tale of a man turning into a bug is nothing close to being silly. A scientist working on a teleportation device accidentally steps into his machine with a fly and slowly turns into one himself. Both the original and the David Cronenberg remake shouldn't be too scary, but they are both, especially the latter, downright haunting. In Cronenberg's The Fly, the nightmarish beastie is full of the typical body horror expected from the director. Seeing Jeff Goldblum's gradual evolution into a human-fly hybrid has some completely disturbing visuals, and the creature itself is one of the most terrifying that Cronenberg has ever made. Even when describing it there, it's easy to forget that this movie's real monster is a human fly. A tiny and irritating bug infused with a man. It could almost be the origins of a lower-tiered superhero, but instead it's a gripping and disturbing creature that will truly scare you. Number 8. Kill a Car in Christine Stephen King, back again so soon. It's hardly surprising that the horror auteur would appear again on this list, as his ability to turn everyday things into terrifying creations is tried and tested. Humanity has almost always had control over machinery in the lifetime of the current generations. While the concept of technology and inventions fighting against their creators has been seen in science fiction and some horrors before, it's never something ordinary like a toaster, a fridge, or dare say, a car. Again, like with Cujo, the idea of being run down by a vehicle is rather unpleasant. But when describing a movie about a sentient red and white 1958 Plymouth Fury that becomes jealous and obsessive over its owner, you're more likely to let out a chuckle than a gasp of fear. However, the 1983 movie, directed by John Carpenter, entirely turns this inanimate object into a source of terror. Christine's overly domineering obsession and murderous tendencies make the car truly feel alive. Although you shouldn't be afraid of the shiny and buffed vehicle, you can't help it. It's a shame that King's next soiree into sentient vehicles, Maximum Overdrive, was anything but scary. Number 7. Vines in the Ruins Plants, trees, and general shrubbery are hardly terrifying. Even the worst stinging nettles are only mildly intimidating. Ultimately, plants are not something to be afraid of, especially if movies like The Happening and Day of the Triffids have anything to say about it. However, there is actually a great example of a killer plant story that does get some decent scares, and it's called The Ruins. Based on the book of the same name, this film focuses on a collection of young tourists who go on holiday to a remote archaeological site in the jungle. After some impolite snooping and a confrontation with the residents, the leads end up becoming subject to the sinister and wholly evil life inside the ruins. As has been made abundantly clear, this really shouldn't work, as the evil creatures that hunt them are actually just the vines that have grown inside. 
Somehow though, these plants are apex predators that not only strike at the characters, genuinely consuming their flesh, but can also use smarts to pit them against each other. It sounds absurd, and on paper it is, but the vines are genuinely terrifying as they manipulate, hunt and consume. They'll have you thinking twice before you pick up flowers ever again. Number 6. Chucky in the Child's Play franchise Chucky is one of the most enduring horror movie villains in the history of the genre. His films have spanned across 30 plus years and he still seems set to have a place in the future of the industry. This killer monster truly is one of horror's most terrifying creations. But he's literally just a doll. Of course, while Chucky is only a toy, the fear comes from the fact that the plastic coating is just a host body for the creepy and downright evil Charles Lee Ray, a notorious serial killer who uses black magic to transfer his soul into the figure. What makes the initial Child's Play movie so scary is the concept of a killer inhabiting the body of something that your kids might play with. Still, once everyone discovers this killer doll's real identity, he really shouldn't be that scary. Although Chucky can't seem to die, it's hardly like he should be able to catch you if you ran away. Plus, his tiny frame should barely be able to lift a knife, let alone have the strength to plunge one into you. Despite all of these logical step backs, Chucky is genuinely terrifying, thanks to his creepy design, the fact that he keeps coming back, and the frightening performance given by Brad Dourif, and by Mark Hamill in the 2019 remake. Number 5. The Pale Lady in Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark the 2019 adaptation of the classic Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark book series was quite a disappointment for many viewers. It decided to approach its plot by linking the separate stories into one big narrative, but all fans wanted was a set of anthology shorts that brought the creepy tales to life. Despite this, it did give us the Pale Lady. Looking at her design and even watching her in the movie at first really isn't so bad. Sure, she does look rather creepy thanks to the uncanny valley as her facial features are just human enough to get by but don't look quite right. But this monster just isn't that scary since she looks more like a lonely girl who wants a hug from you. However, therein lies the fear. Although her design and motive lack any real scares, it's the way that she hunts down Chuck that makes her nightmare inducing. Whatever direction the character turns, she is there, patiently walking towards him, ready to take his life. The Pale Lady may not look all too bad, but her inescapable reach is sure to make you at least a little petrified. Number 4. Gilman in the Creature Series When it comes to thinking of the classic monster movie lineup, your thoughts will likely go to some obvious names like Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster and The Mummy, but it's quite likely that you might have forgotten about their peer, Gilman. This creepy amphibious monster was the lead antagonist in the Creature series, including some movie classics like Creature from the Black Lagoon, Revenge of the Creature and The Creature Walks Among Us. Thanks to his influential legacy, you'd imagine that even looking or thinking about this beastie would be enough to induce some frights. But really, it's not. Gilman is not visibly scary to any extent, and while that could have something to do with the effects of the time, it hasn't stopped his contemporaries from remaining as frightening figures to this day. This creature's human-fish hybrid body comes across as quite goofy, and you're probably more likely to chuckle at the sight of him than you are to run away in fear. There is a reason that this figure is still considered a vital member of the Monster Squad though, and it's because his ability to hunt on land and in the water makes him an apex predator. Despite the goofy concept, this monster managed to scare an entire generation, and that's impressive seeing as he's nothing but a fish man. Number 3. The Blob in The Blob the Blob is hardly a scary sounding creature, and it likely doesn't take much to convince anyone of that. It's hard to believe that a movie by that name would even get released, let alone become a major figure in horror and absolute drive-in favourite. But that is exactly what happened with this gooey and slimy extraterrestrial creature. So what is it exactly? This monster is an amoeboid space entity that crash lands on Earth from inside a meteorite. From there it goes on to consume and dissolve citizens in Phoenixville and Downington, Pennsylvania's small communities, growing in size each time and becoming more ferocious as it develops. By the end, the monster easily towers over cars, buses and even buildings. Even though a malicious blob of what looks like jelly sounds like a funny bit and not a horrible monster, it is actually very convincing, as the concept of a creature that only seeks to consume and has no remorse or emotion is a terrifying prospect. We can even still see vague allusions to the character in popular culture, such as the symbiotes from Spider-Man lore. 
The thought of a gelatinous interstellar being capable of dissolving and destroying humanity is far scarier than it sounds when you call that entity the blob. Number 2. The Pale Man in Pan's Labyrinth An earlier entry talked about the Pale Lady, and now it's time to talk about the Pale Man. Hopefully the pair aren't related, otherwise there could be a whole scary pale family. While Pan's Labyrinth isn't strictly speaking a horror title, the terrifying presence of this creature had audiences everywhere petrified, even to this day. The child-eating beast only appears in one scene, but it was quickly the most memorable part of the movie and gave this flick the right to be called a horror. The brilliance of the design is that it frightens you so much that you don't think about the logistics of his body, because if you step back and think about it, the pale man shouldn't be a threat at all. Firstly, while he's called a child-eating monster, his mouth doesn't look like it could fit anything. In fact, he barely even manages to eat one of Ophelia's fairy companions thanks to his small jaw and lack of teeth. Additionally, those skinny and frail legs would barely even hold his body up, so running away doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility. Finally, although the eyes on his hands are a spark of creativity, it begs the question that surely whenever he uses them, say for trying to grab you, his sight would be impaired. Ultimately, you don't think about these kind of things, but really you shouldn't be all too freaked out by this guy. Number 1. Slow Zombies in Countless Movies if you were to see a rotten corpse walking towards you, slowly making its way to give you a bite and turn you into a zombie yourself, then you'd probably be terrified. But in reality, although the idea of seeing a decomposed dead body spring back to its feet is scary, there's no real reason to be frightened by them, because by the time they get a good look, you could have already run away. Of course, the additional factor that makes these monsters so frightening is their sheer numbers. Typically in a scary zombie flick, the creatures utterly overtake the populace and are therefore unbeatable. But if you were to take those numbers away, what you're left with is a creature that shouldn't actually work as a horror villain. The industry itself seems to have acknowledged this, as thanks to movies like Zombieland and World War Z, the slow and bumbling zombies of the past are dead and buried. Ironically. Although the slow zombie doesn't make logical sense, there is still a fear factor towards them, as their creepy groans and cannibalistic tendencies always strike terror in the hearts of viewers, even if they could be easily bested by some decent cardio. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.